Gorilla Physics. Yeah. This video is part of three, all about the first principles in thermodynamics. We're on to the point in this video where we're actually getting toward deriving the ideal gas equation and actually talking about some of the experiments that were done to derive first the gas laws and then into the ideal gas. So if you haven't found the first one, you might want to go back to that um, or after it find the third one. So here we are going to derive the ideal gas laws now. So hopefully you've had a little look into it and you found out answers to these. We're going to talk about what the three laws are, talk about the experiments that were done to actually define them initially. We're going to then use the three gas laws to derive the ideal gas law. We're going to talk about, make sure you understand the equation and how to use it. And we're going to talk about the difference between physics and chemistry. Some of you might be chemistry students applying this. And um, then we're going to use that to actually apply it to how a fridge works, how a steam engine works, and how a car engine works. So this is the first of the three laws that we derive. It's the oldest of the three laws, and it's called Boyle's law. What Boyle did was he used a compressor and he compressed a, a um, volume of a gas by actually compressing a liquid and causing that to compress the gas. So there's a trapped gas, and it must be a fixed mass of gas. For Boyle's law to work and what he found out was that pressure was inversely proportional to volume and if you see this graph over here you've got that inverse proportionality that curved um, graph there and if you were to plot one over volume against pressure then you get that straight line you've been able to derive those that type of graph there and the animation down there shows you kind of why that is in terms of it being a gas it needs to be a fixed temperature. That's a pretty crucial thing here, okay? Um, and we'll see why that is as we go forward with the gas laws. There's three ways to write this law in algebra, and I think that knowing all three of them and being able to relate between them is useful because they're more useful for different situations, okay? This is a very useful for just understanding, right? Pressure increases, volume decreases, pressure doubles, volume halves easy right if you need to do a proportional change in a question this is the best way to think about Boyle's law but there might be times when you're asked to actually derive it well then you, this is the best way this one in the middle PV equals K so pressure times volume always equals a constant the same no matter if you've got the same mass of gas at the same temperature then you can increase or decrease the pressure you'll get a new volume um, and then if you multiply those two together you will always get a constant if you take any pairs of values from anywhere on this graph then you're always going to have the same constant if you multiply them together so that's a useful thing for it, especially for showing if something is inversely proportional and this last one here if you're given um, the pressure and volume before a change then a pressure afterwards and asked to calculate the volume so if you're given any three of these and as to calculate the fourth, then this is the best way to remember it. The pressure before times the volume before is equal to the pressure after times the volume after. I think that's pretty kind of basic stuff that you, I'm sure you'll be able to do. But a good understanding of this, you'll need to remember, well, you need to think, well, which one's more useful to me at which time? So Charles Law then, um, this is generally done in the lab by means of a thermometer down here. Look, um, and a syringe and you submerge the syringe you've got you've got the syringe closed off either heated and sealed up and you you heat or you cool the water and you see how the syringe volume changes we kind of did this um, with a gas syringe um, and it, it worked pretty well as well there's different ways of doing the same thing but you just need to find a way of changing the temperature and being able to measure a change in volume now this is an interesting kind of example of how um, of an effect of Charles Law, okay, a, a consequence of Charles Law. This person is stuffing balloons of gas, so it's a fixed mass of gas, and he's getting them very, very cold by putting them into some liquid nitrogen, and he finds that the gas inside occupies a much, 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 much smaller volume, okay? Because Charles Law says that volume and temperature are proportional and that is if pressure is fixed so pressure is a difficult thing to fix as you've just seen but if you could fix the pressure then that's what you you will get 
And lastly, to say this graph down the bottom here tells us how we can actually get back to absolute zero. So absolute zero is this point here, this theoretical point I talked about at the start, where they've got no kinetic energy whatsoever, it's where the molecules of this gas have no kinetic energy at all. So what is happening really in this experiment over here is they've taken some readings of volume at temperatures in the kind of range at which water is a liquid over here and then they've extrapolated back, extrapolated, they've added extra um, data onto their graph from the actual experimental data they've got and at the point at which the volume would be zero would be where there was no kinetic energy whatsoever and that point should be somewhere around minus 273 degrees C which we call zero degrees Kelvin and I'm sure you've kind of come across that or heard about absolute zero before again there's a three ways of remembering Charles law volume is proportional to temperature or volume over temperature would be a constant and useful for deriving later on or just the volume over temperature before is the volume over temperature afterwards which is useful if you need to calculate the fourth the uh, fourth and of and you've got three of the others the last of our three gas laws then is called the pressure law or gay lussacs law but most of the time we just refer to it as the pressure law okay this is again pressure proportional to temperature and this would be for a fixed volume so this time you have to fix the volume of the gas and this is, tends to be done with a spherical flask with a sidearm and a, a way of measuring the temperature and keeping the air trapped in there so it's got to be a fixed mass don't forget fixed mass fixed volume this time and linking it to a pressure gauge um, and measuring the pressure there we actually did this pretty well by using this kind of setup but with a electrical sensor um, thermometer a data logging thermometer and a data logging pressure sensor in the lab and we did get that nice straight line which is the same kind of straight line that you get um, in the previous one see it down the bottom here again where you're taking data in the kind of range of water or above actual freezing in the range of liquid water and you're extrapolating back now we didn't get minus 273 but we did get an average of around minus 256 which is pretty good for the lab but I must say if we'd have plotted our error bars they would have been huge and uh, we've got something in the range between like minus 50 and minus 500 as our absolute zero but it, yeah it was pretty good as a kind of average and it was great to see you should have a go at seeing this um, and I'll show you a way to simulate it in a minute again the three ways to write it pressure is proportional to temperature for a fixed volume for a fixed mass of gas pressure over temperature is a constant useful for deriving the um, ideal gas equation in a minute and the pressure over the temperature initially is equal to the pressure over the temperature afterwards this kind of little diagram on the right hand side is a useful way just to visualize why if you're fixing the volume does the pressure increase with temperature where you're giving them more kinetic energy so they're hitting the sides more often with more energy so the pressure increases okay let's now go ahead and derive the ideal gas equation so this is all three of the gas laws coming together to make this new law called the ideal gas law and this is the most useful one because actually if you fix any one of the three variables then it's just that goes back to the original law so if you just remember this you actually remember all three of the gas laws that we just talked about so I told you that's more useful to remember them in terms of if you, the function of them equaling a fixed constant so initially P times V equals K that's um, Boyle's law V over T that's uh, Charles law that equals a constant P over T that equals a constant um, a constant as well, the pressure law. Well then if, if that's all true then the pressure times the volume over the temperature must also equal a constant. If you just imagine deriving these together you will get that. There'll be a different constant but it will be a constant. Okay, So we can therefore say that P times V over T initially is equal to P times V over T afterwards. And what we can say then if we just define this constant which is this here nk 
where n, capital N, is the number of molecules and k is the Boltzmann, Boltzmann constant. Okay, I've written that down here. Um, so, and then we'll just move the t across so we don't have any uh, fractions. So PV equals nkt. And that is the equation as we use it in physics. Now, in um, chemistry, they use it ever slightly differently. And it's, it's the same equation. But instead of number of molecules, they use number of moles. And instead of the Boltzmann constant, it's the molecular gas constant. So nk would equal nr. Okay, so it's just the same thing but differently. And then just to define what an ideal gas is, to make sure this applies to an ideal gas, which is a fixed mass of gas, um, not under gravity, with all particles behaving with a perfect elasticity. They're not often going to ask you to remember those ones, but the idea of well, the fixed mass of gas is the key one that, in general, you're going to need to be looking for. Thank you for watching Gorilla Physics. Please do like, share and subscribe. That really helps me be more useful to more people. Also, please go ahead and check out Gorilla Chemistry and Gorilla Biology. You can expect the same sorts of things, past paper questions and videos to help you understand topics. Thanks once again for watching.